Hello there, I'm Poshboy Bakes. Welcome back to the channel. Good to have you with me. It's time for something rather different. It's time for a squonk mod. Hmm. Is squonking dead? That's the million dollar question going round at the moment. Only one way to find out. Let's take it for a toot. I have here the Pulse 3 from Tony B Projects and Vandy Vape. Sitting atop it purely for colour matching reasons, I have the Wasp Nano RDA, the version 1, the original. And in it I have a big fat single coil, because it's a single coil RTA, from Pete's Own Made Coils, not a sponsor, just a friend of the channel as you know. And I'm running my good old favourite Ribery. Let's give it a little squonk, yep that's fine, that's nicely saturated. And at 58 watts let's take it for a spin. And that's carrying juice over. Maybe I need to pump the power up or maybe not squonk so much. And tell about our practice, can't you? It's been a while since we had a squonker on here. So, and let's have a look on the table, find out what you get in the box, put a build on it. Um, well, not, we're not going to put the build on, on the table, we're just going to have a look at what you get in the box and how you set up the internals, including the squonk bottle and the choices you have, because there are choices. And then let's come back up top and talk all about it. All right, here we go. Right then, here we are on the table with the Pulse 3 from Vandy Vape, uh, Vandy Vape even, and Tony B. And let me just see, there is a website on the back here. So in the box we get the Pulse 3, two squeeze bottles, that's nice, you get a spare. Instruction manual, a Type-C cable, and an 18650 battery adapter. So, let's get into it, shall we? This one is in frosted blue, look at that. Uh, so let's just take off the protective sleeve there, throw that in the bin. There's our frosted blue Pulse 3. There's a s squeeze bottle already inside it and there's a spare one there. Ah, so one's clear and one's kind of grey. Well, not clear, um, whitish. There's your USB-C cable, there's your instruction manual. Okay, fine. Let's pop those to one side for a moment. So, what do we have? We have fire button, screen, up and down buttons and USB-C cable or USB-C port down here. Access to our squonk bottle there. And we've got the same shape aperture as we got on the Pulse 2, uh, which was a bit more, gave us a bit more space than the Pulse 1. And I've, I've got and had all of them, there's your 18650 adapter, uh, from the original mech, the Pulse 1, the Pulse 2, the revised Pulse 1, which had the upgraded, um, what do you call it, uh, upgraded power. Uh, so you could go up to 90 watts instead of just 80. Interestingly, they've done away with the bottom access that we got on the Pulse 2. That was a huge change. We had this bottom access port that you unscrewed to get the bottle out. Now, it's kind of gone back to just the old way, which is just the bottle that fits in like that. But, I will say, that's quite easily accessible. The tube is not too long. Oh, and look, you undo that flap to refill your bottle. That's kind of clever, actually. I quite like that. Pop the clear one in, see what it looks like, or the white one. I think it looks a bit better than the grey, personally. Personal choice, isn't it? I mean, that's just going to come down to personal preference. I kind of like the white one. Um, we've got a big, very solid uh, fascia plate at the top here with your normal 510 thread, and you can see your squonk pin there. We've got space there for a 21700 battery, or if you wanted to use an 18650, you can. I think what I've got to hand, what have I got here? Let's have a look. Uh, I've got a 20 or a 21. The 21 is in a rough state, so I'm going to use the 20. It's good enough. So I think we pop that in. We can, I don't know if it'll see on camera, we've got a minus and a plus there. So we'll just pop that in, minus at the top there. And it comes up, we have a colour screen with a puff counter, we like, wattage, resistance, volts and time. We don't have battery percentage. We've got battery bars. I really would like battery percentage. And if we hold down the button, we go all the way up to 95. It doesn't round robin. And that will obviously then go all the way back down to five or something, I would imagine. Which takes a little while. Yes, it goes down to five. Okay, I cannot remember what the coil is in the RDA I'm about to put on here. So I'll put it on 60. I think that's gonna be about right. Um, and I think then, 
Ah, so getting the juice bottle in and out is a bit of a fiddle with the battery in the way. And it, you do need to put it in the right way around so you can get to your fill plug. So it's got to go in that way around. And then we can go to our fill plug and we can fill it up. So let's do that, shall we? Let's squeeze some juice in there. And it's going to take what? Oh, good. Mm, I'd say a good 10, at least 10 mils of juice. I could check the instruction manual and find out what the exact capacity is. But like any squonk mod, it's going to keep you going for the whole day easily. Ooh, careful, don't uh, don't go too quickly or else it's going to blow back on us like that. Ah, why is this now? Have I got an airlock somewhere? And if so, how? Ah, it was just me. I'd created a bubble. Uh, just got to be a little bit careful as we get near the top to slow down a touch. Just so we don't... Yeah, it's pushing back on us slightly, but okay. All right, there we go. That's that full now. Oh, that is full. Right, okay. So we can put our door back on that side. Put our door back on that side. That secondary door, by the way, is simply so you can push your battery out more easily. Um, no, uh, no greater purpose than that. But I like the fact that it's now uh, stereo specific. You only put it on one way round. And for matchy matchy purposes, or near as damn it, I'm going to put the my good old favourite original Wasp Nano RDA on the top here, which screws down quite a way. And then I said well, we should just check the squonking capacity or properties now. Yes, I can see juice appearing there. I don't know how well it's going to come out on camera. Oh, God. I think I can anyway. Was I imagining it? Hopefully, I really hope I can see juice coming through. Ah, yes, I can. Excellent. That's loads of juice. Right, okay. And that, there you go, is the Pulse 3 assembled and ready to go. Easy, really, isn't it? I like it. It's a little bit slimmer as well, I think, than the old one. I'll have to check the exact dimensions, but I think it's slimmer. When I do the face work, let's look at it. Let's look at them together next to each other. But I think it's a little bit more slim line. So that was a, oh, a 0.2 coil, 0 0.20. So 60 watts is probably about right. We'll see how it goes when I vape on it. I'll see you back up top. Well, there you go. That was the table look at the Pulse 3 from Tony B Projects and Vandy Vape. So is squonking dead? You know what? I can't answer that question yet. Let's talk a bit first, then I'll answer the question. What do I like? What do I dislike? I really like the form factor. I think it's beautiful. Um, it's It's got some cues from the V1. Um, and it's taken away some things from the V2, but we'll talk about those. Um, I love this colorway, and there are a number of attractive colorways, and if I can find a picture, I'll put it on the screen. Um, the display is nice and bright. Um, I can see clearly my uh, wattage. I can see my puff counter. And then in a small area in the bottom right-hand corner, I can see the resistance, the volts, and the time of the last puff. Uh, the Squonk bottle is very easily accessible, and it's got that nice square face. And I've used the slightly clearer bottle rather than the opaque one, so I can see very evidently where my juice level is at. Um, and it takes a 21700, as you may know, the original Pulse, of which I have, and I have them all, the original Pulse Mech only took a 20700, as did the V1. It wasn't until the V2 that they managed to put it up to 21. And this takes a 21 quite comfortably. What do I dislike? I dislike the fact they've taken away that bottom accessible port that you have with the V2. That was a, that was a, I've got it over, that sat over there. That was an excellent idea. And I don't know why they got rid of it. I'm also very, very puzzled. Oh, the other thing I'm not keen on, there's no uh, battery percentage. There's miles of real estate on this screen, miles of it. And rather than fancy logos, which they've thrown in, which aren't, aren't unattractive, they could have put in battery percentage or they could have laid it over. There's space to lay it over. Why was there no battery percentage? We like a battery percentage. Instead of got this little five bar, five or six bar block, I think one, two, three, five. Well, that only tells me if I've got, you know, 100, 80, 60, 40, or 20% in my battery-ish. 
give me a percentage, please. And then the one thing that's really on my mind, the thing that's bugging me most of all, is how damn skinny the thing is. It's really narrow. This, I'm talking about this dimension. It's really, really narrow. Now I've got the Wasp Nano on there, which is only a 22 millimeter RDA. And even that has exceeded this metal fascia plate at the top. It's not overhanging the sides of the mod, sure. You could go up to 23 and still not overhang, but at 24, I think you'd be overhanging it, it would start to look really odd. And who has a 22 mil RDA, unless you've got a Wasp Nano? The version two of this, the S, was 24 millimeters. So why is it so flipping narrow? That That's really irking me. That's, yes, that's my word of the day, it's irking me. And I don't understand. It it seems like a backward step, two backward steps to take away the handy filling system with the unscrewable bottle at the bottom and to make it so damn narrow seem like backward steps. So that now leads me to the question, is squonking dead? I don't know. I don't think it's dead but it's not in the fullest of health, if I'm honest. I have a feeling it's looking a bit unwell. And that if, if, if somebody doesn't do something for it soon, that it will, unfortunately, go the way of the dodo. Mm. And this, I don't think, has advanced its cause. This, I think, has detracted from it. It's a shame because it's a good looking kit. It sits very nicely in the hand. It, when it, as it's working, it works perfectly. I mean, a Squonk mod's not a difficult thing to get right. They've done four or five of these already because this isn't version three. There was, there was the original mech, then the one, then the upgraded one that goes up to an extra 10 watts, up to 90 watts, then the two. There was the, what was the, the, the X or the twin, was it? I can't remember. So this is the fourth or fifth incarnation that they've done, and I don't think it's a positive step. I don't. I have missed that RDA, you know. It's so lovely. For such a tiny, tiny, super budget friendly piece of kit, it is staggeringly good. Um, considering these are about a tenner, amazing. But as the device it sat on, I fear, unfortunately, the folk at Vandy Vape and Tony B, God bless him, haven't, they haven't hit the nail on the head with this. I am very puzzled by the direction they took here. I, do you know what? I've, I've spoken to Tony B once or twice in the past. I wouldn't say I'm friends with him, but I've spoken with him. I'm almost inclined to message him and say, what were, what was the thought process? I don't mean to be rude about it. I respect the guy, I do, and a lot of his work has been truly innovative. But I am puzzled by this one, and I think I've said multiple times now. Well, that's about all I can say on the matter, really, I think. That was the Pulse 3 from Tony B Projects and Vandy Vape. Do give us a like and subscribe and share the video around. You know the routine by now. And stay tuned for more content reviews coming your way very, very soon. And I will see you next time here on the channel. I've been Posh Boy Vapes. Cheerio.